Hey guys, today I'll be doing a what's on my iPhone video. First things first, my phone is the iPhone XR in the color white. The first screen of apps is a bit boring and self-explanatory, so I'll just skip it. And so the first file I have is the Google apps. So Drive, Photos, Gmail, Docs, Sheets, and Snapseed. The second folder of apps I have is called Read, and within it is the Medium app, Webtoon app, and a manga reading app. Here I am showing you a few series that I recommend and am currently obsessed with. This one was recently made into an anime and it is actually currently airing. I haven't been reading manga since Haikyuu ended, but if you like a anime series, I highly recommend you check out the manga. Another app I've really been into is called Good Wall, and they're actually the sponsor of today's video, but I'm really glad that I found their app. Goodwill is a completely free social media app for young professionals looking for scholarships and jobs while also focusing on encouraging people to challenge themselves and live their best life basically. I really like the motivating atmosphere that the community provides. It is filled with people around the world of all ages and ethnicities and backgrounds and goals just challenging themselves. In addition to the scholarships and jobs that they offer on their app, they also have a five-week program called Better Together running right now, where every week you participate in challenges. For example, this week's challenge is to post a 60-second clip of yourself talking about a female role model that you look up to and who inspires you to keep doing better. Besides those challenges, the app also provides a long list of scholarships students can apply to that are both need and merit based, so really students of all types can find scholarships to apply to. They also offer a bunch of remote jobs and internships that they have recently added and you can add a lot of your own preferences and customizations in order to filter the jobs that they recommend to you and it's just in general a very enjoyable app to play around with. Also, I forgot to film my actual profile, but I do have a profile and I will be hosting a Q&A on this app soon, talking about where I am going to college and what I'll be studying and all that. So be sure to download the app so you can join me on that Q&A. Next, I have Visco, which I use to edit my Instagram pictures, and it's nice because on the even on the free version, I can just copy my edits from one picture to another. That way, it saves me time and allows me to post more content for you guys. The next one I'll be talking about is Tide, which is a basically just a timer, but it's super aesthetic and you can use it for studying, sleeping, and also taking naps, as well as meditation. It's really useful for times when I'm studying and I want to listen to something while I study, but I also can't focus with actual music. So then I'll just play one of these sounds. The next app I'll talk about is called Sleep Cycle and it's a really useful app that I use every single night when I'm about to sleep. So basically it's an alarm where you can set it to wake you up within a 15 to 30 minute interval. I have it on a 15 minute interval because I don't know, it works for me better. But um, yeah, so and it also tracks your sleep every single night and shows you how many hours 
you were in bed, you were asleep, and the general quality of your sleep, and just in general really interesting stats like that, that I find really cool to look back over. Another app that I find really useful lately is this app called Price Pulse. It tracks the price history of the products in your list to tell you if the price currently is a good one or a bad one. So basically you add them to something called a watch list and it will notify you when the price drops or basically when it's the best time to buy it which I find really useful because actually it saves a lot of time and energy rather than having to manually check the app's prices every single day and write down the price. Since using this app, I have found that it actually makes me consider if I really want the product or not or if it's just an impulse buy. So in that way, this app has also prevented me from buying a lot of potentially regretful purchases. The next app on my phone is an app called I Love You 2, which is basically a pun on I Love You, but I love you because you as in the color, but anyway. Basically, the objective of each puzzle is to resort the colors so that they match in terms of color value, if that makes sense. So like you're reordering them so the values blend into each other. And it comes with very nice relaxing music too. Another game I've really been enjoying is called Animal Restaurant and it's this really cute, well-drawn game where you're the owner of a small cat restaurant. All you do is serve animals and earn these fish currency that you can use to upgrade your shop and add more features basically to your shop. And it's a really cute, stress-free game that I play not necessarily every day but just sometimes when I want something to do and I really like it because it's not addicting like Animal Crossing instead it's more of a game that I can just open and unwind or in pockets of time throughout my day the next app on my phone that I'll be talking about is called Habits it's basically a really simple habit tracker app where you track your habits surprisingly I really like the minimal layout and the fact that you can add as many habits as you like to track without having to pay money. It also has a calendar layout for each habit, so for each day that you complete a habit, it'll fill in the circle for that day. So hopefully that is also a way to motivate yourself to keep your streak and not lose it. If you're not sure what habit you want to track, it also has a list of popular habit recommendations to give you some ideas. Also, I just noticed my, when editing this video that I seem to like a lot of these kinds of apps with similar designs like emojis and really basic color schemes. I don't know. I'm just a very basic person. Another useful app I have on this page is called Sleepy Time. It's a very straightforward app that tells you what time you should go to sleep or wake up in order to maximize your sleep cycle, if that makes sense. I use this app in conjunction with sleep cycle because the times it gives you are based on the 90 minutes sleep cycle that an average person gets, but of course everyone's sleep cycle is different, so I usually like to set my alarm to a range that includes the time that they give me, which is why I use sleep cycle because you can set it in a 15 to 30 minute range. The next app I wanna talk about is called Emo, and it's basically a really cute mood tracker app where all you do is fill in the dot that best describes your mood for the day. If you feel like it, you can write a few sentences describing why you felt that way for a majority of the day or you can just leave it blank and just put the dot only and i like it because it's very simple and easy to, to track every day it only takes a few seconds 
at most even if i'm typing up sentences it really only takes a minute to do and it also looks, looks really cute seeing all the faces together in a month the last app i want to talk about is called papago and it's basically a language translation app for a limited set of languages compared to google translate but i have found that compared to google translate it's a lot more accurate at least for the languages that i use it's really useful for when i just want to know a random vocab word in the language that i'm learning i also actually use it a lot for chinese when i forget a word when i'm talking to my parents or my relatives and that's it for this video thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys enjoyed make sure to comment the apps you've been enjoying lately at home and i'll see you guys in the next video